In this video, we will see how to use a Garmin Phoenix. It might be a Garmin Phoenix, a Garmin Tactics, or even a Garmin Mark. Uh, they are all the same. It's the same thing inside or almost. Uh, many things from that watch might also be almost the same on a Garmin Forerunner 945. Uh, but uh, Phoenix, Tactics, Mark, all the very same thing. So um, in this video, the goal of it is to, yes, I will show you um, many features that if you're new to it, uh, surely don't know. And even if you use that watch since a while, you will probably learn a lot. But the real goal of that video is just to make you comfortable to use the watch and discover even more by yourself. So <laughs> let's start. Uh, the first thing you have to understand with the watch before you navigate with it is how to navigate in it. <laughs> so the way you navigate with the Garmin Phoenix is with those four button. This one is only for the light and a feature that you we will see a bit later. So what we have to understand is that this is a select button, this is a back button, and this is the up up and down button. So up, down, select, back. Now you can navigate into the watch. <laughs> um, so let's say for example, now we are on the watch face. And if we use the up and down button, we can navigate to the widget. So let's say I go down, you see, I go down to the widget. So every time I press down, I go down. And every time I press up, I go up. If I go on the weather widget and I select it, well, I go into the weather widget. And if I press the back button, I go back. So I'm going out. I can go down into the widget section, but if I press back, I'll be back to the watch face. So down, down, up, select, back. See, I always like that. But uh, the up button also have a double function so anywhere you are if you press and hold that button you will access the menu and not only you will access the menu of the watch but you will directly access the menu of what you are right now so for example if i press and hold it just right now i'm on the watch face if i press and hold it i reach oops the watch face menu so I can hit watch face here, I select it, and now I can edit my watch face. Let's say for example that now you see I've just been out of it by the back with the back button. If I go down to the weather widget, I can press and hold that button and have access to the weather option. From here I can select Celsius or Fahrenheit. That's the only option I have with it. Uh, I can also reorder the widget, remove the widget, or add a widget. If you go lower uh, that black bar, you will always have access to the very same option anywhere you are. So as you can see, if I going back to that main page and hold it, I now have access to watch face, clock, history. And if I go under the black bar, I have the very same option. So remember, select, back, up, down, double function here access the menu of what you are on right now. So if you are on anything and you ask yourself, hmm, would I be able to change that? Would I be able to customize it even more? Press and hold it, you'll see. You, you will probably have an option for everything you are on at any time on the watch. Um, so let's have some fun with the widget. Let's see what we have in here. So. The widget are some tools you can access quickly from the main page. Um, so here I have the weather, um, very handy feature. Uh, so actually I can see that it's cloudy outside and that it's actually uh, zero degrees. And the maximum and the minimum, uh, minimum of the day is one to uh, zero Celsius. So if I go into that feature here, I can see even more uh, data so still it's cloudy it's zero maximum minimum it feels like minus two and there's a, 
uh, wind coming from south at eight kilometers per hour. And there's actually 0% of uh, rain. And it was updated at 1301. Uh, I don't know if you realize it. I will go back. But when I get into uh, that uh, widget, there was something just right here on the side like that, those four dots, that actually goes away. It's because there is other page inside that widget. So how do I access it? Going down, going up. You see, I navigate through those page. So actually the second page is made to uh, broadcast the, the, the forecast. So for the next hours. And now there's something special. There's a double system page. As you can see here on the upper right corner, there is three dot and the first one is uh, white. This means I'm on the first page of that page <laughs> and there is three page. So if I press that button now, instead of, of doing a selection, it will bring me to the second page and the third page. And if I press it again, I come back to the first page. So you are able to know uh, what is the forecast for the next 12 hours. Now, if we go down, we have access to the next days. And finally, the 12 hour trends, uh, which represent the uh, percentage of rain and temperature. So we would see another line if there was a chance of rain eventually. So let's go out of that widget and go to the next one. I love this one. Uh, it's the sunset widget. So as you can see here, the sun has rise at 719 today and will set at 707, which is in two hours and 58 minutes. If I go inside that widget, I can have on a beautiful graph the percentage of daytime and nighttime of the day and when the uh, twilight is. So from here, I can see that the sunrise is at 719 but we can see its light as soon as 6.45. Same thing for the sunset. And if I use the up and down button, uh, I can see what it will be to tomorrow, after tomorrow, or any day of the year, just like that. I can also go in the past if I would like. And we can push the bar even further. Remember, I told you, if you are on something and you ask yourself, hmm, would I be able to see even more? Well, press and hold the menu button and you'll see. So actually, you see its current location. If I go into here, I can do a city search uh, from history if I already search for something. Saved location or use the map. Use the map. Uh, <laughs> so if you use the map, if you at any point uh, have a map to use, uh, you see, actually, I can already navigate into it. If you can't, uh, use press and hold the menu button and you will have a pan and zoom option. But we are already into pan and zoom. So uh, as you can see, I can, you see there is plus and minus. So now those two buttons will be to zoom in and zoom out. And if we use that button here, it will toggle that option here to make it go north to south or west to east. So if I would like to know what is the sunset time somewhere else in the world, I can zoom out very, very far again. And now I could go, let's go in Europe. Um, let's go north. And a bit, well, so yeah, like here. Let's go in Sweden. All right, so just right here, for example. So I'm gonna hold that button. It will find the nearest city. Lamhold. Sounds like Ikea. <laughs> and there we have it. Uh, that was for January 3rd. So if I come back today, like that, I have the sunset and sunrise time for that day. 
You can also do like I show you if you come here, go on location and you do, uh, you can use coordinates or you can do a city search. You can uh, spell the name of the city and it will find it. It will find it anywhere in the world. Seriously, it's mind blowing. You don't have, you don't need any internet connection. It doesn't need to be connected to your phone. It just work. So let's go back to the widget. Uh, again, we are inside the widget. So if I want to uh, have that one first instead of weather, I could press and hold menu, go down to, uh, no, it's the first one, reorder widget and move it first. Select, and it's done. No, finally, I want the weather first. So hold it, reorder widget, move it first, select, and that's it. Next one, ABC. ABC for altimeter, barometer, and compass. So you see now I can, uh, I can see in which direction I am pointing. So you see west, and you have the degrees right here. So I'm pointing now north. I am at 113 meters high in elevation. And you can see here that the barometric pressure, the atmospheric pressure is currently uh, going down. So if I go inside the widget, I can have all that information. And right now you see there is that stuff. It's because I lock it uh, a little bit earlier. Uh, that was, no, I'm not at the right place. Uh, we'll come back to this a little bit later. So again, we have the same information just on a bigger screen. You can have your uh, last four hours uh, elevation. So if you did climb or decline, it would be showing up right here. Actually, if it's not uh, all the four hours long, it's because uh, the watch was powered down since a few weeks. I am actually testing another watch. Uh, the atmospheric pressure and here it's the compass. So if I use that, I can unlock heading. So I will uh, restart that. So now it's a regular compass. But if I come here, go unlock heading, you can point direction. So let's say I want to go into that very uh, direction. I can set it. And now, uh, from now, as soon as I deviate from that direction, it will tell me, well, go a little bit on the left so it, it will help you to uh, keep a cap like that all right so that was the ABC that one will tell me that uh, it should run a 5k in 25 minutes uh, there, there's a lot of option uh, steps and you can even find some other more so if you press and hold the menu button you go down to add widget you have a few other ones well, quite a few. <laughs> so that that's up to you to personalize this page as you wish. So I've show you some. Now just just navigate into it and add what you want. We are back to the watch face. Um, there's something interesting. You, you you can do it. it. You can personalize that watch face like crazy it's it's unbelievable everything you can do that's my watch face what i want to have here is the uh, time of the day i want to know that we are friday 10 uh, that the altitude is uh i want to know my altitude the sunset time and as soon as the sun will set it will tell me the sunrise time i have my hearth rate the actual temperature outside so before i go running uh in the evening I don't have to pick my phone and go check the weather or even to just press that button here to see uh, what is the, the actual temperature outside. It's, it's just right there. Uh, and the battery uh, remaining on the watch. Um, so if I want to edit that, again, press and hold the menu button, reach the watch face, select it, and you have the option to have many, many, many kind of of a watch face. So if you want something with uh, uh, the, the, the end or you want the digital one with very few option or a lot of option, that's really up to you. You choose the one you want. When you're satisfied, you press the select button and then you can even customize it. So if you want to customize the data, 
you can change you see now we have the altitude the barometric uh, uh, pressure hearth rate battery days temperature highs and lows of the day number of steps sunset calories floors intensity you have a lot of things you can choose from uh what was it altitude yes uh if you want to know everything about this i did a complete video and you can take a look at this just right here so i'm gonna go out of this now okay uh we've seen the widget we've seen the watch face now let's see uh what's the name it's the controls so controls are another kind of widget you can access by press and holding the light button and it's always displayed into that circle so you have some things again you can personalize it if you press and hold that button you can add control reorder control or remove control see if we go into add control you have unlock and lock keys sync phone wi-fi wi-fi <laughs> why do you have a wi-fi it's just because you can sync your phone over wi-fi it can download the update over wi-fi instead of doing it with the slow connection of bluetooth between the watch and the phone <clears throat> you can time time sync stopwatch the altimeter bar meter there's a lot of things um uh, let's see what we have actually here yes timer we will see it a little bit later because it's there but i access it another way uh we'll see it later you can save the actual location you can see the alt time zone if you want to be uh, we'll see it later again that's probably the only function I use right here is to find my phone. So sometime a day I lost my phone. I, I use it. I use that <laughs> that feature a lot. So I just come here. When I lost my phone, I'm looking for my phone. I don't I don't know where it is. I don't search it for too long. I just take my watch, press and hold that button, find my phone, and there it is. My phone is ringing. I love that feature and you can make it stop by going back or just take your phone and say stop so very 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 handy feature uh, you got the do not disturb if you uh, don't want to receive any notif notification from your phone on your watch at some point uh, if you want to power off your watch you can do it just right here if you want a flashlight yes that might look stupid it's just a white screen with the backlight turned on but believe me <laughs> if you're lost in the wood or if you're just in the wood at night uh, there is no moon uh, and there is no cloud to reflect this the city light on you uh, that already happened to me and I forgot my actual real flashlight I use that and it's impressive it, it, it does light you up you won't see all the trail but it's just enough so you can see the rocks and the trail you can see the trail just in front of you and it will help you to uh, remain on it uh, so yes that's some feature that you can uh, access here um, I told you about the uh, the timer and those those kind of things I do access it by pressing and hold it right here and go down to clock so inside clock you have alarm timers stopwatch and all time zone so from here uh, you see I got Vancouver time Tokyo time and I can add another one so let's say for example I want to have the time of Oslo <laughs> so the way it works let's see when you move here it, it it's not actually displaying uh, time zone it's actually displaying countries so you see that's United States Canada go back to the other way United States Mexico Mexico Central America South America um, is there something displayed here some part of the Europe yeah Oslo is right here so I'm gonna select that and now I have Copenhagen, Denbur, Oslo. So I can select Oslo. Do, you, do I want to rename it? Nope, that's fine. So now I've got Oslo into it. Do I want Oslo between Tokyo and Vancouver? Maybe. Let's go on the pen. 
and say Oslo, the pen, reorder right here. That's it. <laughs> oh, right here. So you see, I've got different time zones. Uh, you can use a stopwatch. So, well, it's a st stopwatch. You press start and it's start to count. You can press here to make some laps like that. You can stop, reset it. There's a few more options. Just go navigate into it. You'll see. Uh, you want a timer. I use that often when I cook. So I put something into the oven and I want to... Uh, I need a 10 minute countdown and something that recall me at the end that take it out before it burns so yes you got a uh, countdown just right here stop reset you got again few options and alarm alarm is very very well done uh, let's erase that one and restart delete okay so there is no alarm let's add one hat select the time uh, let's say 5 30 again <laughs> select that all right and now um, see if I go back here see the alarm at 530 is actually on if I press here it's off on off and if I want to edit that alarm because basically uh, when you set it up it just set it for once it will ring one time and then it will go to off you see repeat off so if I edit that uh, well, again, I can set it on and off, but I can also change the time. It's repeat. Uh, so do I want it only on every day, only weekdays, weekends, or custom? So here I can select, let's say, Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Why not? And when you go back here, you see uh, the day it will ring or uh, green. I will edit that again. There's another option that I like. It's the sound and vibration, and I like to just set it on vibration. You can have tone, you can have vibration, you can have both. So let's say vibration. So if you are into a dorm, well, you, you won't wake up everybody. It will just vibrate on your wrist and probably wake you up. So yeah, that you have mini option over here but I will just delete it because I don't want to be wake up in the next few month <laughs> um, yeah that was that was it uh, what do we have else don't worry we will uh, arrive sometime at the activity but we will do it at the end there is some other interesting feature that you might like uh, so if we go into the settings, what can be interesting? Activities and app, widget, we already see that. Controls, watch face, sensor and accessories. If you need to uh, add a Bluetooth earth rate sensor or something like that, uh, you can do it here. We already see the map. I told you, uh, yeah, you have map themes. You can, you can edit the map in many ways. Uh, you can personalize the, way, the map. You can download new map. Uh, the music, the music, interesting option. Uh, well, of course, yes, there is some music provider, but you can also, uh, it, it's from here you will select what you want. Uh, do, do you want to listen Deezer, Spotify, uh, the music you download into your uh, watch if you still have MP3s, or you can control your uh, phone. So it's right here you select what you want to do as uh, w with the music app. Do you want to control your phone or do you want to listen to Spotify? Uh, actually, mine is set on Spotify. But if you want to access the music, uh, you press that button just right here. I was showing it up because uh, on the Garmin uh, 4Runner 945, there is that music button just right here. But I did forget that it's not on the Garmin Phoenix, but still, uh, even if the logo is not on the button, when you press and hold it, you access the, um, the, the, the actual music app. So anywhere you are, you are into an activity, you are on the watch face. If you want to access the, uh, the, the music, 
uh, app. You just press and hold that button and you got it. So actually this is uh, Spotify. So uh, does it connect to, uh, I would need my, my headphone uh, to, to, to listen to it. Uh, but yeah, you have access to, uh, to the music. It's pretty easy to, uh, to understand. So let's go back down here. Uh, that was music. Uh, if you want to pair your phone, that's right here. If you want to pair it on the Wi-Fi, that's right here. Uh, for the uh, audio prop, user profile, saf safety and tracking. Um, uh, if you go inside here, yes, there is incident detection. It does work. It does work. Sometimes it will uh, work a bit too much, but uh, the only time it did work a bit too much, I did understand why it detected that detected as an incident uh, one time i did stop really really hard on my bike and the other time i was uh, <laughs> smashing my shoes between each other to make the mud go away and yes actually the watch detected as an incident because it, i was really really punching them hard so it does vibrate a lot into the watch so yeah uh, yeah it, it works well uh, but if you have your phone connected to your watch and you are somewhere you where you have uh, actual signal or internet connection uh, it can send a message to uh, the contact you have choose to say hey uh, I, I did have an incident I'm in trouble and uh, please come and help me or send someone to do it uh, yeah very very indie feature um, Next, uh, activity tracking, navigation, navigation. There's a lot of things we can do in here. We'll see it a little bit later. Power management uh, for your battery, battery saver. If you want to make your uh, watch to hold, to, to last longer, but uh, do less stuff. And into system, we have some interest things. If you want to change the language, if uh, English is not your main language, like hi, you can change it just right here. I'm French Canadian, by the way. Uh, time backlight, backlight. There, there's something interesting here. Um, we have few. <laughs> we have some sub menu in here. So you see, there is the backlight setting for during an activity, not during an activity, and this one is new. It's uh, during sleep. It's the yes, it's the same thing again. So. Uh, into each menu you will find the very same things but you can adjust it for if you are into an activity not or if you're sleeping the one i changed it's probably the only one i changed from the settings is when i am during an activity and i do a gesture so the gesture is moving up the the watch and in, into that position so it's a reading watch position and so what i did is you can have it off on or after sunset so basically what this mean is that um, if if you <laughs> if you are into an activity and the Sun is set and you watch the watch it will turn on the light and under it you have the timeout so I want it on for eight seconds and under it you have a brightness so we can really choose at what brightness you want the watch to be so that gives you a lot of options about uh, backlight so set it up as you wish personally that's the only feature that I did change uh, sound do not disturb hotkeys hotkeys are amazing uh, hotkeys are some feature that you can they are shortcuts so if you press and hold a button or two button to together it will do some thing uh, I'll show you what I did so if I hold start that's something that I did change if I hold start that's on, that will only work during an activity it will take me to a page to change sport so if I am running and at some point I'm tired of running and I want to walk uh, I, I would be on my running activity and I will switch it to walk so I will press and hold that button and it will take me to a page where I will be able to choose any sport I want so I will pick walk and I will continue the same activity as a walk instead of a run 
So that's something I did change. You see, if you hold back, that's by default. If you hold back, it will take you back to the watch face instead of pressing it multiple times. If you hold down, we already see that when you hold it, it takes you to the music control. Uh, if you do start, start and down, actually there's nothing. But we can put alarm clock, backlight, uh, broadcast HR, change port, clocks, control, dual grid, flashlight, lap, uh, metronome, MOB. There, there's a lot of feature here and I do explain all of them in the video just right here. If you want to know more about this, see that video. Uh, but I'll show you what I did also. The back, back plus light, if I hold those two, one, it does the flashlight. So I don't need to go into the control if I want to enable the flashlight. When I need a flashlight, I want it quick. So I just press and hold those two buttons and I choose that, that one because, well, it's the light button and I think it just makes sense to hold those two one. It's easy to do with your right hand, just like that. Well, like that because it should be on my wrist. It's easy to do and I've got a flashlight very, very fast. So yes, again, that's something you can... Uh, edit the way you want auto lock unit what do we have else um that's pretty much it for that menu all right all right so i think we've reached the point to explain the activity so <laughs> to start an activity on the garmin phoenix you will want to press and to press just press the uh start button it will take you to that page and if you go there for the first time it will ask you to uh, choose your favorite sport so that's what i did i pick run hike bike and walk and if you want to add something else later you can always do it you just have to go lower you will have your let's say less favorite activity actually for me there is no but i can uh add some other one just right here so there's a lot of activity there's a lot of activity on that watch to choose from. And all of them can be edited in a very unique way. Uh, there's a lot of them. There's also a multi-sport. Uh, if you do a multi-sport, uh, again, I'll see that, uh, that, that, that activity uh, feature kind of fast because I did a complete video that was, I think, almost an hour. Uh, to, to deeply dive into it and it's available just right here but still uh, because I want to see a bit of everything on that video we will do it so the multi-sport um, feature will let you uh, like if we go a little bit lower high scene triathlon swim run uh, those one are preset um, multi-sport but you can create your own just right here and give it a name and choose really what you want so you will pre-select the sport you will do in the order you will do it and you will also have some um, uh, time to switch sports so let's say for example you will be able to see at the end that you run for uh, this time and then uh, while you were, were putting your uh, cycling shoe you did uh, you did pass I don't know 45 seconds to switch your shoe and uh, you'll be able to see all, all of that stuff actually I not really uh, using the multi-sport option when I want to switch part into an activity I just press and hold as as I show you a little bit earlier I press and hold that button and it bring me that uh, choose activity uh, switch um so let's go start for a hike so i select the hike uh actually the watch is looking for a gps you see the bar at the top there's just there's just that little red spot this means that uh, the signal is very poor and that's normal i'm inside um so when i i, I go out i i never wait for the gps uh, i just start the activity and while you are moving, I, I realize that it will find the satellite signal faster if you start moving. And you will still get your distance even if uh, the satellite is not, not full on because the watch detects its movement. Actually, yes, this did, did start a live track because that's a feature that I have enabled. So when I go out with that watch and I have my phone, 
uh, it sent a message to my family that, hey, I'm I'm out and I'm on an activity and they can know exactly where I am. So if something happened, well, they will know where I am. Um, so yeah, if I come here, I can uh, stop the live track and the live track like that. So <laughs> on that page, you see now I got my elevation, my distance, my m moving speed. So my speed, uh, <laughs> my actual earth rate and the timer since the beginning of the activity. And if I use the up and down button, I can navigate through a page to another to uh, get even more information. I got the map at the end. You can personalize those uh, information really as you wish actually this is yeah like that okay <laughs> um now if you want to edit that you can press and hold that menu button and go into hike settings hike settings because i'm into a hike if you were running it would be run settings and i think you understand uh, if i go on data screens uh i can choose the page that I want to modify. So let's say that one is time of the day and I would like to have time of the day and timer on that page. So I'm gonna press that button here and I can change the layout because I want two information. I will need to select a page with two information and actually, well, it's already the timer. That one was too easy. <laughs> let's change uh, that one. So we have total essence, elevation, and total descent. Mm, let's say on the last one, I would like to have not the total descent, but uh, could there be something interesting uh, into, we'll go into data fields. You see, I, I did press that pen button, data fields, and I want something else about the, um, the elevation. So you see that one is blinking and I will want to change that last one. That's what I said, I want to change to that one. So I will move to the last one with the down button. Now that's this one that is blinking and if I want to select it, I select it. And then you see now it's distance field, pace field, speed field, hearth rate fields. Everything is class into fields and when you get into the fields, you have everything related to it. So let's find the one elevation field. That's the one I want, so I go into here and I can have my average ascent, average descent, maximum ascent, maximum descent, elevation, total ascent, total descent, lap ascent, if you're working in lap. So you do have a lot of information. Yeah, I want my maximum elevation. What is the highest I have been into that activity? Maybe that's what I want to have. Let's say that's what I want to have. Uh, you can also, if you go into layout and you have, you want to have even more information, you can go to the very last one and you can have six information on the same page. Uh, this is the Garmin Phoenix 6. Uh, the maximum for this one is six. But uh, if you go with the Garmin Tactics, which as you can see, the screen ha is a little bit bigger, uh, as big as the Garmin Phoenix 6, 6X, uh, uh, this one will be able to have up to eight data fields on the same page. But again, you edit it as you want. And if you want to know everything, every option available, uh, the meaning of every data fields, you can see uh, the video on the upper right corner that I show you a little bit earlier. Actually, I can't show it you show it to you a second time. But if you go on the eye on the very right corner, you will be able to. Um, to access it. I'll put it in the, in the description too. Um, so yeah, that's data fields. Uh, the video will last about an hour, as I told you. Oops, I always forget that the back button is also the lap button when we are into an activity. So I've been a little bit too far. Uh, again, if we go here into the Ike settings, <clears throat> you have access to alerts so if you want to have an alert after uh, for your heart rate for if you reach some speed uh, if you want to be sure you're not going uh, on uh, over or under a certain speed you can have it here you want to have an alert after some time some distance you can really edit <laughs> the sport activity as you wish 
uh, yeah, again, a lot, a lot of options. There's also, did I see navigation? Did I pass navigation? Uh, well, you can go on the map for this. If you go on the map, press and hold here. Pan and zoom, yes, around me. You want to know what, what is around you? That's interesting. Uh, well, yes, no, I, I'm not really using that one, but you see, you, you, do, you do see that there's convenient, convenience stores, toilets, uh, picnic tables right here, uh, but I'm not really using <laughs> that button. Uh, around me, save location, hike settings, navigation right here. So if you go down to navigation, you will be able to find, uh, well, you can go back to start. If you're lost, you, it will take you back to start. It can be on your foot or it can be with the shortest route because you have the map inside the watch. Uh, you can also <clears throat> point of interest. So if you're looking for a city, food and drink, uh, truly city will tell you uh, what city is around you. Or you can also do a spell search. But if you we just wait, you see Granby, Roxton Pound, Beaumont, Canton Shefford, and all of, of those are showing up just right here. Uh, if you're looking for food, 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 uh, hit here. Just wait a few seconds and it will tell you what are the nearest restaurants. So see, we've got Tim Horton, Jamel, Planet Putin. And actually, that's impressive because that restaurant is not that old. It's kind of young as a restaurant, so I'm kind of surprised that it's here. Uh, there's a Subway, McDonald's, and if you want to go there, you just hit it. You say go, and it will create you an itinerary to go there. Actually, it will probably not work because I'm inside, and it doesn't really know where I am. So, no, it won't work. But trust me, when you're outside, it does work. So it will tell you the distance remaining because the one we've just seen was the uh, straight line distance. But now it will tell you the distance you need to travel to reach that destination. It will give you uh, the estimated time of arrival, the distance remaining, and then the the, the the estimated time remaining uh, of arrival. Arri it will tell you the estimated time it remained to reach the position and the estimated time uh, the clock of the day you will arrive. So, <laughs> I always forgot it's the lap. Um, okay, uh, what else do we have interesting here? Um, I don't think it's pretty much it. Navigation. Well, yes, you can access a lot of things. You you can do a lot of things, but just navigate into it, and you'll see. When you when you are into the activity, you can pause it by pressing the start stop button just right here uh, then it will tell you do you want to resume so yes just restart let's pause it again uh, you have other option uh, one that is great well you can save it so at the end of the activity that's probably but pr probably what you want to do you want to save it or you can resume later so let's say for example you are on a big cycling trip and you stop at the restaurant you just find with the uh, find restaurant option and you say resume later because you will stop there for maybe an hour so that doesn't drain your battery uh, because the GPS is now disabled you're outside the activity you're you have your watch face you have the same information as you have every time and when you're ready to go you press the start stop button and it take you back to uh, that page and well you're ready to restart the activity and actually, what I will do with that activity, I will stop it and I will go to the very last option, which is discard. So I just remove that activity. I did nothing. I don't want to save it to uh, Strava and Garmin uh, Connect. So the activity is just deleted. If we go into run, for example, before you start an activity, you see there is that option with the up arrow so if you press the up arrow that's this one you can set a target race an activity so yes if you did another activity recently and you want to race the same activity you can do it uh, or you can also set a target 
So let's say that I want to run 10 kilometers and I know that my uh, best time for 10 kilometers is one hour and I want to beat that time. So I will select 10 K and this will add a page to, uh, to my running page. So if I go to the very last one, this one is usually not there. So now it's there. You see on the top, it tells you that oops, distance remaining. So that distance will go down. Actually, we see it because the activity is not start. Uh, this will show uh, the distance remaining. At the very bottom, we see the average pace and the information that I want is just right here, the estimated finish time. So depending on the, the speed I am running to and the distance remaining, it will tell me, well, at this speed, it will take you one hour and five minutes. So if you want to beat yourself, well, beat yourself. <laughs> Uh, well, that's another indie feature. You see what we see on top here is the battery remaining and the time left for that activity. GPS does drain uh, more battery than no GPS. That makes sense. If you are outside an activity, you see there's remaining 13 days of battery. And if we start an activity, uh, do we need to go inside an activity to? Yes. So if I go into an activity, I will see of the time remaining with GPS, which is 32 hours now. So, yes, I think we did see a lot of things into that video. I hope it was helpful. And I think you're now ready to navigate into your watch. And again, don't worry to navigate into your watch. You can't broke anything, explore everything in the watch and you'll be surprised of everything you can do and i think that now you have all the tools all the knowledge you need to navigate into it uh, easily so let's have some fun so this is it thank you for watching i hope it helps if yes please smash the like button if you are planning to buy this watch you can see my link in the description and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can find me back easily next time you need help. If you want to see my other tutorial about this watch, you can see my playlist just right here. And you can also find me on my main channel just right there. Thank you for watching. Take care. <laughs> see ya.